Animation is the best medium to create a motion picture, and I'll stand by that statement, I'll die on that hill. It's essentially the overarching thesis of my channel. My name is Hanlon, and to celebrate coming back to uh, finally making YouTube videos again, here's some movies that I believe represent that idea. Let me know if you watch any of these for the first time, because I'd love to hear what you thought. Enjoy! Although I haven't seen Satoshi Kon's final film, Paprika, his second movie, Millennium Actress, is my favorite. It tells the story of a fictional actress named Shoko Fujiwara. As the title suggests, the setting of her various films span a millennium, starting in the Sengoku period and ending in a futuristic space age. Reality in the movie begins to skew as the story develops, and we're taken on a journey of a literal lifetime. Millennium Actress has multiple layers to it. We're watching a movie about an actress who's at the center of a documentary being filmed that physically transports the characters into the cinematic pictures of Chiyoko while telling the story of her life alongside it all. Describing the plot makes it sound confusing, but that's why this movie is so brilliant. You might feel shell-shocked at points, but the film is incredibly organized. It's more like an experience you're on rather than a puzzle you need to solve. We get taken on an adventure into the life of this woman while unraveling the truth of the mysterious man she fell in love with but lost for many years of her life. It's a fun movie from its first frame, and with a director like Cohen at the wheel, it'd be hard to be disappointed after seeing this. Soon I will finally watch Satoshi Kon's last movie, Paprika, and talk about all of his work in a future video, but for now, you should watch this underrated masterpiece. Grave of the Fireflies takes place amidst the end of the Second World War in Japan. It's a story told in the perspective of a dead boy not much older than 14. The two children, Seita and his little sister Setsuko, lost their mother in a bombing to severe burns. Like other participating countries, Japan had a brutal time during and after the World Wars. This movie shows this in a perspective of two innocent kids who attempt to survive an unforgiving situation. The story begins on September 21st, 1940. 45 the night that Seda died on the concrete of a train station. From here, his spirit meets his sister in a field engulfed in red and filled with fireflies. The rest of the movie tells us what happened to these children. The film is based off a semi-autobiographical novel by Akiyuki Nosaka, which was written in 1967. There's a lot of great anti-war films that I love, but very few completely wrench out your stomach like Grave of the Fireflies does. The author of the original book, Nosaka, had his mother pass away after giving birth in 19. During the Second World War, he was too young to be conscripted, but too old to be evacuated, so he was just left in the middle of things, tasked with caring for his infant sister. With the story being based off his experience and extrapolated artistically by the filmmakers, Grave of the Fireflies is a masterpiece worth your time. It stands as the best Isa Takahata ever made and an important representation of the reality of war on a civilian level. a whole video dissecting Madoka Magica Rebellion, which is almost at 100k, which is crazy to me, but I really want to stress here in this video, spoiler free, why this movie is one you need to see, especially if you love animation. The story of Madoka takes place in reality, with the exception that magical girls exist. They are enlisted by mysterious god Kyube to fight and destroy witches, which are born from human suffering. Each cast member has a colorful story that you come to know in the anime, or the first two recap movies, whichever you decide to watch. Madoka Magica itself became incredibly popular in 2011 when it aired, particularly after the third episode when everything about the series changed. From the ending of the anime, one could think that anything made afterwards is an attempt to milk the show's popularity for what they could. However, if you've seen the first part of the story, you know there is a huge piece missing from the show that is unresolved, and that's where Rebellion comes in. The third movie focuses entirely on Homura. Her complexity as a character arises from the emotions that torture her soul. If you're someone who loves characters that take a lot of looking into to understand, Homura is the peak of that mountain. On top of having an intense internal conflict at the center of the movie, Rebellion is also abstractly artistic. The animation is like no other. The movie bleeds love from its creators, and that deserves more recognition than it gets. Unfortunately, since this movie isn't accessible to understand without knowing the first show well, its popularity isn't representative of how good of a movie it is. If you haven't seen any of the Madoka Magica franchise and you like psychologically intrusive stories, definitely give it a chance. 
you will not be disappointed. Evangelion is a twist on the popular mecha genre. It could also be seen as a twist on child protagonists as a whole. The show centers around Shinji. He's brought onto his neglectful father's project that intends to save the world. For an unknown reason, powerful monsters called angels ravage the earth at unpredictable times. Avas are gigantic robots that physically connect with children's nervous system to act as an extension of their bodies and thus are used to fend off these angels' attacks. The End of Evangelion is a movie that's a substitution for the original anime's ending which was extremely abstract to put it lightly. It's believed that this movie was made in retaliation to the fans unhappy with the show's ending due to it, you know, not being as packed full of glorious action as the rest of the show was, or for it just being confusing in general, you know? <laughs> Although in a making of documentary for the movie, it's said that this addendum aligns more with the intended ending of the show, which was changed due to budget issues during production. Now, whether you prefer the ending of the anime or this movie, the, the artistry of this film is unwavered. Evangelion is something you can hate and love at the same time, and I feel this movie represents that perfectly. Shinji is an unlikable protagonist, but he's a realistic one. Evangelion explores the mental turmoil young children would go through when actually given the responsibility to save the world. The franchise doesn't shy away from extreme mental dismay, sexual tension, and odd behaviors. Whether you completely get the story or not, each form of Evangelion is a work of art. With a budget backed by the popularity of the anime, Anime, the End of Evangelion is a gorgeous, horrific must-watch after seeing the show. It will burn into your memories permanently, but if you liked fucked up things, it's completely worth it. Now, I saved my personal favorite for last. Directed by Hayao Miyazaki and permanently represented on my arm, Princess Mononoke was unique for its brutality when compared to the other movies Miyazaki made. Well, that, that was until The Boy and the Heron came out, but that's a topic for its own video. Mononoke is a period drama that takes place in a fictional time of Japan, one where animal deities walk the land. The gods of nature despise humans for the abuse that their industrialism lays onto the environment. The animals and humans are essentially at war. In the center of it all, Ashitaka is a prince of a dying people. He encounters an enraged spirit of a boar god and is thus cursed with its hatred. Ashitaka is banished from his village as tradition states. He then takes his Yakul on a journey to find the source of the disease that threatens to take his life. Princess Mononoke is about human development, the consequences of hatred, and finding peace. As all Ghibli films are, its environment is gorgeous, but the true value of this movie comes from its intended message. The film asks for a compromise with nature and human society, and details their intrinsic opposition. If somehow you haven't seen this yet, you just have to. Just go go watch it now, After well, after you finish this video. Subscribe if you haven't. I'm officially back in action. Thank you so much for watching, really. It means a lot to me. I've got lots of fun videos planned, um, and I'm just excited to make them. And hey, I hope you have a great day, and with that, that's all I wanted to say.